Uh, Rob, Rob Burt is going to give us a presentation today. He's the owner and operator of Rob Burt Graphic Design and Illustration. He is a graphic designer and industrial artist specializing in illustration, including experience in video, 3D modeling, patent illustration, and independent book publishing. He worked on a variety of design projects over 20 years, including an independent short film, a self-published self -published children's book, and a graphic novel. Rob has a gift for taking a concept and creating a graphic representation. This work includes his unusually high success rate for patent submissions, creating graphics for presentations to executives, and building video games in his spare time. Uh, thanks for presenting, Rob. Uh, take it away. Wow, thank you. I am Robert. Rob Bird of Rob Design Illustration. I do specialize in illustration. Um, and I do come under the auspices of uh, as, an, uh, as an illustrator, um, even though that basically, technically, what I am is an industrial artist, and that covers a lot of stuff, but marketing-wise, it doesn't really lend itself to be marketing-friendly, nor does it allow me to uh, necessarily um, integrate as well with uh, uh, other creators and stuff like that. It allows me to uh, basically like have other videographers and other web designers and other creative types they also participate as opposed to me overwhelmingly uh, suck up the, the design space. Um, so one of the things that I'm going to end up talking about um, today is one of the big projects that I ended up doing this year. But before I get there, I'm going to go over some of the stuff that I've talked about in the past, which is uh, photo restoration, uh, logo design, marketing, art, Patent illustration, and that's design, uh, utilities, and more. I also have my online web comic um, that's out there, uh, marketing materials, um, illustration for things like reading cards, book publications, swag, more swag, that's actually a, a skateboard, um, 3D modeling and some animation. But my biggest project this year was my own wedding. <laughs> um, and going with this, you, you'll notice that um, we basically did a kind of Renaissance themed wedding. Um, this is one of, this is my namesake's tartan that was brought up from um, Scotland. Um, I also have uh, my father's namesake, which is Taylor, that was done up, his, that tartan was actually done up in, uh, in my corsage. Um, but there are certain elements that we basically brought out in that whole aspect when we were designing the stuff for the wedding. Um, and one of the things that we ended up doing was, is she was very fond of um, dragonflies. They're a very um, ancient lore basically describes them as being a good luck charmer, harmony, health and prosperity, care and stuff like that. And they're usually uh, a very good luck sign. So we also ended up basically incorporating that concept into the Celtic stylization. In that manner, we also ended up, and I'm going to pass these around, but some of the promotional, uh, or some of the materials that basically went like the program that was designed. I'm going to pass this around. <coughs> the envelope for addressing. And in the same theme, we actually ended up creating a stamp. And please do not open this at the moment. But it, you'll notice that the stamp that's here is the wax impression that's on the actual mailing that went out for our invites. And that also ends up carrying that Dragonfly logo. And then the actual folded up invite material, at which point we actually ended up going out and picking out 
the paper. Um, there's also, we did a hand fasting thing, and if you'll notice in the uh, program, there's a explanation of all the different colors that go into the hand fasting type ceremony. Um, uh, like red for passion, orange for encouragement, <laughs> yellow. But one of the things, if you'll notice on this, I ended up creating this whole border for the thing, but in reverse, it actually matches up with the design on the other side so that when we actually printed it on that so that it would actually fold over and match exactly up with that so that there wouldn't be any overlapping um, material type of thing or, or ink impression. Um, again, that's the invite. We did it in, in an old uh, style gothic setup and that was the information that was carried along with it for a secondary page that was folded up in that item that was that's going to be passed around. Um, I actually went out and picked out our um, the actual paper. If you actually notice that the, the paper that's actually with those in, invites is actually a handmade paper that actually comes over from Japan, and it's done in the old style press format. Um, one of the other things that was designed um, was we ended up having a lot of people end up having a sign-in sheet. We had a sign-in map and picture. Um, go ahead and pass around proof for that. This is actually considered proof because it's a smaller format, it's about half the size. The actual size of that print was about 24 by 36. And then all around the border, we ended up having people sign who showed up for the actual uh, wedding. Um, in that, each of these elements were designed, it, it was designed to be an old world map. And in looking, uh, you can't really necessarily see it on the screen here, but there are tags at basically where her and my family's ancestry came from in this area that I ended up picking out to uh, uh, show off where our heritage came from. Um, and Burt's there, Robertson's there, uh, McDonald, Taylor, uh, my, there's some Thomas for Germany. Um, but each of these elements, there's also additional elements that are on here um, that were designed to go along with it. Like each of these little map monsters and boats and whatnot and characters that go along with that style of uh, illustration work and whatnot. Now, I, I want to keep in mind that um, I would never, I, I actually can't resell any of this because as an artist, I mean, in designing something for, um, for somebody else, it'd be sold to you, but there are certain artistic liberties that I took with this that um, I, I would not allow me to actually resell a lot of the items. Um, and, and that's a longer story uh, that gets into like talking about Andy Warhol and, and stuff like that, that you're actually allowed to um, offer duplications of in an artistic manner, and you're not allowed to do it in, um, uh, on a larger scale. Um, so, each of those items were basically um, stylized and recreated from examples that uh, occurred in the past that I ended up utilizing all through that map design. Um, this was the research in finding out where each of those families actually ended up coming from. This is Kusmeric, which is uh, my mother's, uh, my grand, yeah, my mother's uh, side. Um, this is uh, Stora, which is also from my grandmother's side. Uh, um, but, and I go back to um, me being an industrial artist. Um, 
One of the things is that I actually did end up designing the um, the scabbard that I actually ended up wearing um, down at the wedding. Um, Hold that with two hands. Yeah. Is that the best thing to pass around? Yeah, right. <laughs> like, uh, not ex exactly expecting you to use it, um, but when I say that that what I ended up doing for this was the project, it's the entire thing. Um, I've got the stamp that goes to the little bags that are in front of you, and this was actually hand carved out and stamped on it, and hand carved intentionally so that it actually had that type of authentic feel. So. Um, but in going through the process of doing the work for the scabbard, that was out of, it's carved out of walnut. Um, it's two pieces. On the inside, and, and actually walnut's actually not necessarily something that would be um, period used. They would have actually used a lighter um, tannined uh, wood, but I wanted to use, I, I had actually intentions on um, bringing out the black luster in the, the sword scabbard itself. So I actually ended up picking out the walnut specifically for that. Um, but because I ended up doing that, the inside, and, and you're actually supposed to do this anyways, but the inside of that is actually um, filled with wool felt so that it does not um, tarnish the blade when it's actually applied uh, next to the tannin uh, uh, strong wood. Um, and then you can actually oil that so that it actually helps protect the, uh, the metal on the wood or from the, the tanner in the wood as well. So it doesn't rust it. Um, and then that's more examples of the process of working on that. Um, this is the actual um, mixture of, this is an old, uh, old fashioned mixture of basically steel wool and um, apple cider vinegar to actually create the stain that actually goes onto the wood that allows it to become that deep black coated material um, that pulls out all of that nice rich um, deep character, that black uh, color character. Um, that's more pictures of that. Just to show how much I went into obsessed with my OCD basically behavior. Um, the, if you saw in the picture the kilt that I was wearing, um, that's an actual, uh, that's considered an, an ancient Highlands kilt. And that is actually, I ended up folding that up that morning to wear that. Um, during the day, uh, and it's just one big piece of fabric. If you're familiar with the, the statement of the whole nine yards, that's where it comes from. Um, because basically, it's nine yards of fabric that you're actually wearing to protect, to keep yourself protected in the nice and cold weather out there and stuff like that. A little bit of history. Um, then, I mean, I can carry on or I can answer questions, but this is some photos from the honeymoon. We actually went to Land Line, which was a Mayan stuff. We did a river trip. Got to do a little bit of scuba diving. Um, there's Shark. Man, uh, these are all pictures that uh, Julie and I ended up taking while we were doing this. This was a part of the snorkeling. This is why, uh, one of the reasons why the colors were a little more vibrant is because we were actually up more towards the top. Um, there's a little nurse shark in the background too there. Some little artwork. Um, more artwork underneath the water. And a little friend I made. So, any questions? If you pull this up, do you have to use it like the Japanese swords? That is actually, that's a two-hander. You've got to actually lump someone's health with blood. Um, that's actually considered a bludgeoning weapon as opposed to a, a slicing weapon. 
But serious question, do you actually make the handle as well? I fix the handle. Kind of. <laughs> Are you forging steel now? <laughs> do I actually know how to do that? Yes, I do. Do I do that? I do not have a founder of my own, thank you. Next to the chicken coop. <laughs> Did you have your friend for dinner? Um, I ate some of his cousins. <laughs> <laughs> that he was on protected property, though. <laughs> Any other questions? Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Rob. Cool. Great job, Rob.